fried them to a golden brown. Flaky, crispy crust, hot melted cheese. Oh man, that's good. I'm gonna make some empanadas because I'm bored and it's raining outside. I've already chopped one small white onion and then I waited a few minutes for my eyes to clear and now I'm chopping a couple of bell peppers. I'm gonna also chop one of these poblano peppers because I, I couldn't find Anaheim peppers. It's just as good. In fact, Anaheim peppers are milder and I like my food spicy, so this will be okay. I forgot to mince these four cloves of garlic. One, two, three, four cloves of garlic I'm going to mince. First, I have to take all these shells off of these. Now I'm on my last one here. Not a big deal. Comes right off. You can tell when you've got the shelly stuff off and that you've got nothing but good garlic flesh under there. First you, you smash it with the chef's knife. Don't be shy about this. And you just mince them nice and fine. You can't overdo it. And there they are. They're all done. Put them in this plate. I'm going to use them here in a little bit. So I heated up some oil, just above medium. And I put my peppers in there. And three, four, five minutes later, you throw your onions in. They don't need to cook as long. And all together, it's seven minutes. When those seven minutes have passed, I'm going to throw my meat in there. This is 90% lean beef. On top of that, there goes the uh, minced garlic. And all of the spices that are called for for the filling. There's a bunch of them. This is going to be good. Cook it now for another 8 or 10 minutes. This is looking really good. It smells good. It's just salty enough. I'm not going to add any more. It needs another minute, but it's almost done and it looks just perfect. All the pink has gone from the meat. It took me 11 minutes to do this. I had the heat on low. I'm going to cover it, take it off the fire there. It'll still cook a little bit more, but not much. Now, let us go forth and grate one pound of cheese. Eight ounces of Monterey Jack and eight ounces of cheddar. The reason for having two cheeses is because I couldn't make up my mind. What I really wanted was Oaxaca cheese, and that's just not available. This will do. Three and three quarter cups of flour, tablespoon of, teaspoon of sugar, one and a half of salt, or something like that. Look at the recipe. 12 tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna mush this all up with my hands. It won't be pretty. Butter should be cold. Don't ever try it with melted butter. You will regret it. So we're at 12 ounces of butter in the flour, three and three quarter cups of flour. There is one tablespoon of sugar and one and one half teaspoons of salt in here. I made it all nice and consistent with my hands. I'm putting one and one quarter cups of water in here. And we're going to turn this into a dough. So after mixing the dough in the bowl for a bit, 
you put it on on a flat surface, something clean, throw some powder on it, rather some flour to power it. Just dust your surface with a little bit of flour and you'll have less problems with it sticking. You can dust your hand so it doesn't stick and you can dust the outside of your ball here every once in a while just to make it easier to, to knead. This should be kneaded for a good five minutes. And I keep doing this because I keep getting sticky. I may have put a little extra water in there and it doesn't matter because you keep adding little dustings of flour and eventually it's just perfect. It'll stop sticking to your hands and it'll stop sticking to the counter. You see that? It's already begun to do that. We're going to have a nice big ball of dough to make our tasty empanadas. There's my dough, grated cheese, the stuffing, and there's the oil I'm going to use to fry them up. So this next step is basically making tortillas. This is about the same as what I watched my mother do every day of my life growing up. She made tortillas from scratch. You put some flour on the surface and it gets onto your dough a little bit. It keeps everything from sticking. Just on the outside. And this is a little bit extra. And we need a little piece to make a nice empanada shell. It doesn't have to be perfectly round, although that's how my mother did it. They were always just perfect. There's a shell. I'm going to put some of both kinds of cheese. And there's my stuffing. Put plenty of that in there. Eh, I might have put too much. It doesn't matter. I'll eat this one. That way I don't get any complaints from the patrons. Fold it over. Yeah, I put too much. Or I could have used a bigger tortilla, but no, oh, this is the right size. This shell is just the right size. You fold it over. After pinching it together, you fold it over. You want to get it sealed nice and tight. Don't want this coming apart when we're frying it. You see that right there? We used to work in a Bonnie and Fender shop. I'm just going to patch that. All right, you live and you learn. Grab a nice chunk. Throw some flour on here. Get my rolling pin and do my like my mama done and make a nice round tortilla. So there's enough here to make some 20 empanadas. We'll see. Okay, cheese, cheese, filling, fold, poke, fold over. Some people use their fingers to make these pretty little designs on here. I'm going to forego that. Oh, that one turned out really nice. Oh, I'm very pleased with this one. I'm very pleased. I'm pleased with all of them. So I'm on my last one here. And I've somehow managed to use most of my cheese. Not a whole lot of my filling, which is fine because this tasty filling could be put in a taco or enchiladas or a burrito. You can make an omelet and throw some of that in there. 
It's so tasty and rich. I managed to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of them. Now the recipe said 20 to 22, so yeah, I probably didn't do it right. It doesn't matter. Maybe they're just all a little bit bigger. That's just that much more taste. Fry them to a golden brown. Flaky, crispy crust, hot melted cheese. Oh man, that's good. It's a little bit of work, but I think it's worth it. These are good.